Today I'm going to do a video showing you how to use the Hunter Road Forest Elite Balancer that we have located here in our shop. Uh, it's a very nice balancer. It has a lot of features and as long as you know how to use them right, you're going to be able to be very fast and productive and this thing's going to save you some um, or going to make you some money should I say as the road force function can detect bad tires. What I'm going to do right off the start here is I'm going to put in the proper vehicle that I'm working on today and it's a 2007 Pontiac Grand Prix. When I put that in, it's going to tell me which collet that I'm going to need to put on the balancer. So the light green one is right here. So I'll find out, whoa, dropped it, which side of the light green collet I'm going to use and I'm going to use this side of it. So I'm going to slide it on there. After I have the proper collet on, I'm going to use the wheel lift to lift up the machine and get this into place. This isn't necessarily you being lazy. It's you being nice to the threads that are on the shaft on the balancer using the lift. Um, the lift isn't a solid lift. It goes up and down very easily. So I recommending that you use it. This informational page on here also had some other neat stuff where it would tell you um, the pilot hole diameters on the front and rear wheels, the pitch circle of the wheel, the number of fasteners, the socket size, and then also the fastener size thread pitch. So if you needed to order anything um, while you were doing this job and you were over by the balancer, you could actually call in knowing that it's a 12 millimeter by 1.5 uh stud that you wrecked there earlier or the nut was a 19 millimeter size or whatever so pretty handy and if you're balancing some wheels it'll give you an idea of what uh what pitch circle diameter you have and and things like that so i could thread it on like this Okay, and tighten it down, but I just wanted to show you that there is an express way to turning the threads on here and that's by stepping on this lever twice. So I'm going to hold on to this and I'm going to step on the lever twice. If it's going the wrong way, just step on it again and it'll tighten it down most of the way for you. Sometimes all the way. This one's a little stiff going on. I like to give it a good brunt hit like this when I go. I see this tire in front of me isn't the best one in history, but what I'm going to do is I'll give this a spin. And I'm gonna look down the tire to see if it's wobbling from side to side or up and down or anything. This one's not perfect. And as I look on the side, I can actually see what looks like a weld and some repair damage on this rim. But we're gonna balance it here anyways. What I need to do next is pull off any weights. So I'll get rid of this weight using my pliers. I don't think there's anything else on the rim, but I do see the presence of some stick weights there. So I'm going to use this plastic spatula. You can buy these anywhere that you buy weights usually. And get the weights off. We'll spend some time cleaning up those glues in the end, but right now we're gonna balance. Okay, I'm gonna close this book. I don't need that anymore. This machine equipped with road force has this big roller here. And as long as uh, you have the highway imprint on that road force roller, it's going to do its thing. What's also very nice about this uh, balancer is that we have air on board. So you can set the vehicle manufacturer cold tire pressure um, using this here. And as you notice, when you get dirty hands, sometimes the screens don't work perfect. I'm going to set this tire to 33 PSI and it will automatically set the tire pressure for me. You can see it's putting air in. I'm not touching anything right now. And if I had too much, it'll even let air out as well. I really like this feature of this tire machine because um, changing tires usually takes more time than balancing does. 
So it frees up our tire machines. So people are putting the accurate tire pressure and not wasting their time on the tire machine doing it. After I have that entered in, I'm going to lower the hood. And because the road force um, roller is going to engage and put 500 pounds or so road force on the tire, you can even see the bulge in the tire. You have to make sure that the tire is inflated beforehand. Because it saw that I inflated this tire, it didn't prompt me to do anything. If I hadn't inflated the tire, it would prompt me to do it, okay? And there we go. I've got my uh, numbers around the rim, what I need to do and where I need to do it. So we're going to balance this wheel. What you can see here though, is on the road force, there's a picture of this tire and it's green for about two thirds of the tire or so and then yellow for the rest. What they're indicating to you is showing you the yellow represents, or red, hard spots in the tire. And what it can do is optimize this by changing the location of the rim and the tire to put that match set together. Right now I have a road force that is predict that is at 18. If I choose to optimize, I can get a prediction of seven. So by doing road force and I optimize, it'll take me to this screen and it'll show me to mark the rim in one spot and then mark the tire. After I'm done marking those, I'll take them over to the tire machine and I'll break the beads put it up there, lube it, turn the tire so my two marks line up. And afterwards, if I do road force on here again, the number I'm gonna get is seven, which is a good number, it's in the green. For the purpose of this video today, I'm not going to do that, okay? But I wanted you to see that's how you do it. I'm gonna go back to balance and I'm gonna put on the one that's green, the 1.5 stick weight that it's asking for right there. So I'm gonna use my side cutters here and I'm gonna cut off, off our bulk weight station here. 1.5. Gonna look down there and I'm gonna see that it's asking for it right on that area that has all that glue and junk. So I'm gonna give it a spray with brake cleaner to loosen it a bit. And then I'm gonna use this plastic spatula here to get rid of the glue in that area. Now, not all shops are going to, depending on how shiny your rim is and what type of uh, service you're asking for, some sh shops are gonna clean this off every single time, every time, and some are not. Some might use some type of power tool I don't unleash power tools with the kids with this um, just because I think it's a bad idea. So we're going to clean them by hand. And what we're going to use is a little bit of light sandpaper here. This is 600 grit. It's not going to rough this up very much. But what it's going to do is give a little bit of a cleaner surface to mount your stick weights to. Clean that up. If at any time you want to go to a weight location, you can tap the servo button and it will move the balancer to the proper location. So there's my 150. I'll remove the tape and I'll be very cautious not to touch any of the tape. And I'm gonna place the weight in line with the laser perfectly centered and I'll push that down. I've done that one now. I'll tap again and I'll go to the next weight location. It's asking for a 0.5 uh, weight. Oh, sorry. It's a stick weight. I almost went and hammered one on. It's another stick weight. 
Remember, watch the green one and watch the green area. I almost got bit on that right now. Let me give a little spray. Give it a scraping. Sorry about the video being upside down. I like to hold my head upside down when I do this. I'd be entertaining to watch right now. I'm gonna sandpaper that area. Clean it up the best I can. Gotta remember that you're not uh, charging tons for balancing here. So you do want to, you wanna get these done, you know, people, four tires should be done in anywhere from half an hour to an hour. So you gotta get after it. Half ounce weight, stick it in place, push it down good. Okay, now I should be serving, servoing over to my last one, which is just a quarter ounce aluminum weight. So we have all our weights back here. Take your quarter ounce aluminum. You can see the laser there is shot in line with the weight. Hammer it in place. Okay, and then we're gonna lower this down. I'm not quite sure, oh, that's because I went into, um, I said that I was gonna optimize this and I didn't. So that's why it's gonna road force again. It's gonna ask about the tire pressure because it assumed I had it over at the tire machine um, lining up those marks. And I didn't do that. So I'm expecting to see the same road force. You can see that it's accepted my weights already. So I've balanced this properly. And then there's my 18 um, pounds of road force over there. So, um, yeah, this time it says that it exceeds the limits because it thinks that I've already fixed it. So when I say optimize, I suppose I probably should, but it's still giving me the option to optimize that right now. So what I'd like to do is, um, I'm gonna do another video doing that because I feel that this video is just strictly just showing you how to use this balancer. So after I'm done, I'm gonna raise the table back up here to support it. I'm gonna break this nut free and if I double tap my lever down there, it will take it off for me. Step on it again so it stops. The table slides, which is super nice, and down. Okay, we would normally uh, pressure wash this and clean this up before uh, this gets over to the balancer. For today's demo, I didn't, but I did clean the areas. Okay, you can check my weight locations and stuff. Those weights aren't coming off. I can't peel them off easily by hand. So I think we've done a good job. It's balanced. It's within the limits of road force. But in the next video, I'm gonna show you this same tire assembly um, being force matched to correct that. Alrighty, that's how do you use this Hunter Road Force Elite Balancer.